<laughs> Boo! <laughs> Hello, my dears. <laughs> it's me, Menopause Barbie, dressed like a cow. The things I do for you. <laughs> you know I'll do whatever it takes to make learning about menopause fun and easy. So today, I'm a cow. And that's because we're talking about dairy products. And the truth of the matter is, I've had to shoot this video a second time because this video has a fan in it and it inflates to be very big and perfect shaped. But guess what? The fan created interference with the sound on the video. So I had to readjust and make the cow costume work in an alternative way. <laughs> If you've been watching my videos in order, you know that we're smack dab in the middle of a section on dietary management options for menopause. And sometimes I teach you something that isn't specific to menopause. In fact, sometimes I present a video that everybody should watch. And this is one of those days. This is a topic that is critical for everyone. It's probably really going to make you wonder about some things. The last few videos have addressed the benefits of a plant-based diet, and I've lumped meat and dairy products together. Today, I'm going to focus only on dairy products. Have you ever given any real thought to dairy products? I mean, have you ever stopped to compare human behavior to that of other animals? You see, I do that a lot. When you compare humans to other animals, it helps you to understand a lot about normal behavior and abnormal behavior. It helps you to make sense of lots of things. For instance, you've heard me say that other animals don't experience menopause, and that makes you wonder what the purpose of menopause is for us. And the answer is it has no purpose. We're supposed to be dead. And that brings you face to face with how unnatural menopause really is. And when you realize that, it makes you pause and reconsider how you might want to manage your menopause. So if we compare humans to all the other animals with regard to dairy, you'll be shocked at what you discover. Answer this. Name one other animal that continues to ingest dairy after weaning from breast milk. Can you think of any? No, you can't. And that's because there aren't any. Humans are the only animals on earth that eat or drink dairy products once they can eat solid food. So that alone tells you that there's something unnatural about our behavior. What about this one? Can you name a single other animal that ingests the dairy product of a different animal? No, you can't. And that's because there aren't any. We're the only ones who do something that wacky. And when you stop to think about it, it doesn't make much sense. Mother Nature designed cow's milk to put a few hundred pounds on a baby calf within a few months. Mother Nature designed human breast milk to put just about five pounds or so on a newborn baby within a few months. You're human. You don't need or want the effects of cow's milk. And just like the calf stops drinking its mother's milk once it can eat solid food, you were supposed to stop drinking your mother's milk when you could eat solid food. But for some odd reason, humans decided that after weaning from our own mother's milk, we should start drinking the calf's mother's milk. And guess what else the cow's milk has that you don't need? Growth factors for a cow. They're not intended for humans. You don't need to get as big as a cow. I'm as big as a cow right now. <laughs> <laughs> and because those growth factors are not supposed to be in your human body in the first place, they cause not only obesity, but cancers, diabetes, weight gain, and digestion problems. Have you ever noticed how many people have difficulty digesting dairy products? Statistically, over 85% of adults have some degree of difficulty digesting at least one form of dairy. And guess why that is? It's because Mother Nature, Mother Nature made it so that you're not supposed to continue 
drinking dairy. You're supposed to stop producing the enzymes necessary to digest dairy once you're weaned from breast milk. In Mother Nature's opinion, once you can eat solid food, you shouldn't be eating or drinking dairy anymore. That's why most adults have gas or bloating or cramping or diarrhea when they eat dairy products. And have you ever heard how people say they can't drink milk, but they can tolerate it if it's cooked? Hey, you know why? Because the cooking process breaks down the milk a bit. That heat from cooking does some of the digesting for you. And what about people who say they can't drink milk, but they can eat yogurt? And that's because the process of fermentation breaks down the milk to a degree. Again, it does some of the digesting for you. Do you see how this makes perfect sense? You can always count on facts from me, and facts make sense. You know all those lactate products you can buy? I mean, there are lactate products galore. I have caplets here. I have fast-acting caplets. I even have chewable caplets. Yeah, they're everywhere. There's even lactate milk. Good God, think about that. Lactate dairy products are milk products without the main ingredient that constitutes a dairy product. Milk contains a sugar called lactose. Back when you were a breastfeeding baby, your body produced an enzyme called lactase to digest the milk, sugar, lactose. So your body produced lactase to break down the lactose. But your body is only designed to do that for the first year or two of your life. And then your body is supposed to stop producing it. Why? Because you're supposed to stop ingesting it. But we humans have decided to break all the rules. We've decided to continue filling our bodies with the stuff it no longer wants. So the dairy industry has completely bamboozled you and everybody else into believing that there's something wrong with you if you can't digest dairy products. There isn't anything wrong with you. There's something wrong with the dairy industry. They've taken this normal occurrence of being unable to digest something that you're not supposed to ingest in the first place and told you that you are intolerant if you can't digest it. That's crazy. They've even given it a name, lactose intolerance. They make you feel inadequate by telling you you're lactose intolerant. You're not lactose intolerant, you're just not a baby cow. Even the baby cow can't tolerate it once it's not a baby anymore. It's not an intolerance. You're not supposed to tolerate lactose. They've even gone so far as to delineate who is most at risk for lactose intolerance, as if it's a disease. I'll tell you who's at risk. All humans after they're weaned from breastfeeding or bottle feeding, period. So now, not only has the dairy industry brainwashed you into believing that you need to eat and drink dairy products for the rest of your life, they've even created a whole industry out of the lactate products to make sure you do. And you don't even realize that you've been programmed, even brainwashed, into believing that you need dairy products. Back when you were a little tiny tot, the cafeteria put that little square carton of milk on your lunch tray every day, and they told you that you need milk for strong bones. And you've seen commercials and advertisements to that effect for as long as you can remember. And later, when you were a little older, they told you that you get your calcium from milk. And now they made you believe that you prevent osteoporosis by drinking milk or eating yogurt. You know that none of this is true, right? There is vastly more calcium in green leafy vegetables than there is in any dairy product. And calcium does not prevent osteoporosis. Ooh, but the dairy industry doesn't want you to know that. Do you have any idea how many diseases are directly related to dairy products? The list will shock you. It shouldn't. I mean, you're filling your body with a substance you're not supposed to ingest from an animal that's not human and which contains all sorts of growth factors and proteins that are foreign to your species. So how in the world is something like that supposed to be good for you in any way? It isn't. It makes you sick. 
dairy products cause all of the following. Heart attacks, diabetes, calcium kidney stones, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, Parkinson's disease, autoimmune diseases, even osteoporosis. When people started wising up to the fact that dairy products contained fat that clogged their arteries and caused heart attacks, what happened? The dairy industry produced a low-fat or scam version of every product. And what did you do? You decided that the low-fat version was healthy. You got snickered again. Just because there is less fat does not mean that all the other detrimental things about dairy go away. Have you been fooled into believing that you're getting all the good and none of the bad by ingesting low-fat dairy products? If so, you're fooling yourself after they've fooled you. Oh, and then there's the organic myth. Organic changes nothing about the fact that you shouldn't be putting this stuff into your body in the first place. Do you see how the dairy industry is just finding a way to keep you hooked on dairy? And you're falling for it. You're probably especially shocked at the last item in that list of diseases caused by dairy, which was osteoporosis. I'll bet you thought you were preventing osteoporosis by ingesting dairy products. You see, this is the kind of thing that upsets me to no end. Here you are, having been completely snowed over by an entire industry. So much so that your knowledge is completely wrong. It is so wrong that it's completely upside down and contrary to fact. So let me give you the truth. Get this. Americans consume more cow's milk and dairy products per person than most populations worldwide. And you've always believed that milk makes your bones strong. Now I've taught you that bone strength is all about calcium. And I've taught you that how much bone you have is all about estrogen. So I hope you realize that calcium, no matter what its source, has nothing to do with how much bone you have. But it does have to do with how strong your bone is. Well, if Americans ingest more dairy products, you'd expect them to have stronger bones, right? But they don't. It turns out that statistically, countries that use the most cow's milk have the worst bone health. That's right. The United States has one of the highest bone fracture rates, despite all that dairy that Americans ingest to make their bones strong. Now, of course, you know that I'll give you a perfectly logical reason for this, right? Here's what happens. Dairy protein increases the acid load in your body. Plant protein does not. Your body doesn't like acidity. So anytime your body detects too much acid, it tries to fight it. It wants to neutralize the acid. And one of the best things for neutralizing acid is calcium. And since dairy doesn't contain enough calcium to neutralize the acid, guess where your body gets the necessary calcium? From your bones. Do you see the vicious cycle? Here you are believing you need calcium for strong bones. But you've been deluded into believing that dairy is your best source of calcium. So you ingest the dairy that you can't digest from an animal that isn't human, and it contains all sorts of things that make you sick. And when you ingest it, you make your body acidic. And in order to neutralize the acid from the dairy product, your body pulls the calcium out of your bones, which defeats your reason for ingesting the, the dairy in the first place. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Doesn't it bother you that an entire industry has been built around this delusion? And doesn't it bother you even more that your health has been sacrificed in the process? Can you see how illogical this is? We'd all be better off if we just stopped putting dairy into our bodies when we can eat solid food. Now, I suspect that this is where you're thinking, but I love dairy products. Yeah, you probably love cheese and ice cream and cream in your coffee. Well, that, my dear, is called an addiction. Don't you think the dairy industry knows its products are addictive? Of course they do. 
That's one of the tools they use to make sure you keep on eating dairy. It's everywhere. There is dairy in things you can't even imagine. Of course, it's in the obvious places like all the desserts, but it's also in salad dressings like blue cheese and roquefort. Americans say roquefort, it's roquefort. <laughs> Caesar, ranch. It's in soups like clam of mushrooms, clam of tomato, clam chowder. Cheese is a part of every dish. Feta cheese on salads, cheese on baked potatoes, cheese in Italian food, cheese on nachos. Lactose is even commonly present in artificial sweetener packets, candy, and medications, both prescription and over the counter. Dairy has become a ubiquitous part of our diet. If you're vegan like I am, it's very difficult to avoid it. Most people in the restaurant business aren't even aware of which foods can constitute dairy products. Now, I know you think I'm kidding, but I am not. The bottom line is that you are hard pressed to avoid lactose in dairy products, even though you can't digest it, even though it makes you sick, and even though it worsens your bone health. Your human body has no more need for cow's milk than it does for dog's milk or horse's milk or giraffe's milk. It only needs your own mother's milk and only until you can eat solid foods. It's a crying shame that you've never learned the truth about dairy. I call it the dirt on dairy. Because if you ask me, this whole dependence on dairy is a dirty addiction and you aren't even aware of it. The whole cold hard fact is that dairy, the dairy industry does not want you to know the facts. Sadly, the information you get favors the interests of the dairy industry over your right to factual information. So I urge you to really give this some thought. Be honest about what makes sense. And make sure you share this video with the people you love. It could save their lives. Sorry to be such a cow, <laughs> but it's my job to tell you the truth about everything. So much of what you get elsewhere is anything but the truth. Moo. Moo. <laughs> this is where I'll leave you. I'm going to go eat some plants like all the other cows. So follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to my channel. Go to my website and find something that pleases you and educates you. Sign up for a seminar. Sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Bye. Bye.